Welcome to a retard's guide on how to do the prophecy dungeon. And by retard's guide, I mean you are guided by a retard. The first thing you're going to want to do is assemble your elite team of guardians. You want a well balanced team, poised between defense, ad clear, and boss DPS. I'd highly suggest bringing a Titan. I mean, wait, why? Why do you have? Why do you have a fanny pack? <laughs> I, have, so I do. I have a fanny pack on my chest. Uh, surprisingly enough, and in contradiction to all your knowledge, he's gonna be the brains behind the whole Did operation. You try putting it in here, in the light one. Oh, so now we need light modes. Yeah, I wonder why we, why those ones didn't drop light modes. Let's take a look back. How do we get light? Do you think you have to stand in a light area and then kill them? that way i don't know i think we have to stand no, in the light no, no. That, it wasn't well, that what? no you know uh, the reason why i say that because i'm standing in the dark and around my screen there's like a dark visual effect but then when i stand in the light now it's a light visual effect so that's oh that's doing. true that's true so it could oh. be that oh make sure he's got bubble for defense and his light level is well below 1040 as this actually makes him better for obvious reasons so russ you are um 50 levels down <laughs> <laughs> Fire! <laughs> Next, you'll want your DPS dealer. And honestly, anyone with a high enough light level and a large arsenal is gonna be your man. As long as he's brave. Um, um, <coughs> he's aiming a gun at us. Reliable. Uh, nice, I got three light here. Wait, 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 I need, oh, oh I, I have two. two. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? And doesn't complain about other people's loadouts. I hate, I hate that you're using Sturm and Drang. I'm just gonna mute you. <laughs> Which brings us to what you should be running. As that clear, there's really not that many good options nowadays. Like, any Destiny player worth his salt can take a look at what most content creators are claiming to run and know that it's all bullshit. Recluse? Never heard of it. Trinity Ghoul? A bow? <laughs> what about time? Are we in the Dark Ages? And Wither Horde can go suck my dick. Actually, it's kind of shaped like a- <laughs> As we all know, Sidearms got a massive buff this last season, now allowing you to dual wield. So most any sidearm that Rampage can roll on is going to be good, but I'd highly recommend Drang. It's a little known fact about Drang that although its affinity is solar, it actually does void damage as well. Because of the purple thing on the side that doesn't change color no matter which shader you put on it. Now, I haven't seen any proof of it doing void damage, but why else would Bungie put a giant purple thing on the side that can't be changed no matter which shader you use unless it's to signify void damage? And if you're using Drang, you also automatically get to use the highest DPS hand cannon in the game. Literally no other gun does this sort of damage. Spare rations has literally never seen five digits before. It's scary to see the rare four. Can you imagine the intimidation it'd feel if there were five? Take a look at Sturm's magazine size. That's why it does so much damage. Because the bullets are so stuffed in tightly beside one another, the velocity of an escaping bullet is that much greater, making its impact so much media. Quick maths, really. So, in terms of guns, Sturm can't really be beaten in terms of kinetic DPS. Now that you've assembled your team, it is time to tackle a dungeon. Vibe check! I'm vibing. Starting to vibe. <laughs> My team and I will be showing you over two separate runs on how to do this. You know what I realized, Matt? When we did this, we took a long time figuring this shit out. <laughs> a lot of other people took, like, two minutes. You know what, Aaron? You know why it took us so long? It's because we're retarded. <laughs> true, true. Now, how do we get the light modes? You t attack random people and some of them will spawn. Excellent. God damn it. Why are they all black? How do you make them um, light? Ethnic cleansing. Okay. Hey, Morris, Morris, come here, come here. Do you see anything? Nope. Oh, do I have to kill somebody in the light? Bungo has introduced a very poetic mechanic into this dungeon, in where black moats go into the black pillar, and white moats go into the white pillar. This is obviously in reference to yin and yang, the principle introduced by Xin Zhao. All things exist in contradictory opposites, such as light and dark, warlocks and titans, hunters and anything useful. As Zhao Yan once said, all things are balanced if looked at hard enough except destiny. 
So yeah, once you've banged him out, you summon a primeval. But instead of a primeval, you get a huge phalanx. Who's immune? Who sits on an island with a death pit around it? Now this, this is good game design. You can tell they brought in the team from the elevator part of the corrupted strike in for this one. Look, man, communication is key. Oh Alright, Mars, where do we go? That is a good question. I shall go into the light. Oh, Mars, that's where we came from. Oh. Shit. <laughs> you see, like, when when they make you know in normal normally in video games, wherever the light's coming from is where you should go. Yeah, well, I mean there's light in places. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, sometimes Other they use that way. They use colors oh, in video games as well to signify where to go. Every now and then they <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, you know, you know, there's like different color palettes and um, like a huge spotlight pointing at exactly things. where to go <laughs> in purple with 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 the direction I saying sink descend. I accidentally fell off. I thought I had to choose which one of the holes to go into. I mean, you do, but we all know it's always the back one. Better safe than sorry. The next section is something special. If you've ever played Journey, you know what I'm on about. Bungu actually co-produced this encounter with that game company to produce the most introspective experience ever made in a video game. The music and ambiance, the symbolic nearly empty atmosphere, the aimless wandering that gives you just enough guidance while also giving you freedom of choice. Oh, the yeah. way is open. Ah! Where? They really brought it all home with this one. 12 out of 12, an excellent sequel to one of the most highly appreciated games ever. And the next part is where the developers took a quick snort break. An acid trip. Bango nailed the construction of this mechanic in terms of how it makes you feel. You really feel like Spider-Man. The trippiness of the walls becoming the floors, the color east is up, showing the outside degrees of the foreshadowing signifying of Europa and the fact that there will be Tain and Yang. Wait, why the fuck is everyone so happy? this isn't one room rotate? Did anyone even know the name Europa between six different rooms? This room exudes what the developers themselves were feeling at the time of creation. <laughs> Alright, so this is what, side number five? How many sides did they do a square? <laughs> I'm sorry, did you just, did I just hear that? One, two, three. I can't math right now. Shut it's up, not. Dude. It's not math. Oh, I'll be honest, dude. There's... I can't count. So in a square, there's one four count. lines. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six. Okay. <laughs> Wait, a square? Okay, last side. Because I hope it's the last side. Because there's six sides to us. Cute. As we learned from earlier. <laughs> No, as you learned from, <laughs> yeah, 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 from earlier, we all do. No. <laughs> Is it how many sides has a cube had? Oh, that. Oh, <laughs> you're, that's what you're referring to. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. He did indeed question how many sides a cube has. Uh, Morris. Yeah. How many sides does a cube have? Uh. The answer may surprise you. <laughs> you're taking a lot longer than. Then it should. Sixteen. Sixteen. <laughs> Wait, what are you cubing here? What are you cubing? Yeah. What 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 is a cube for you? Like a three D cube, right? Yes. How many sides does it have? Sixteen was your original answer. Do you want to change that? Well, it's not four. No, it's not. Okay, yeah, well no, done, well done. We can eliminate four. Yeah, yeah. We, we can eliminate four. We can eliminate 16. How many, how many yeah. sizes does a cube have? How many sizes does um, a cube have? Oh, fuck. How many can I Google? No, you can't no? Google! How many sizes does <laughs> a cube have? Google this? Why do you need to Google this? <laughs> what do you want about? I'm tired. <laughs> 
Forest, look at me. Oh my god, there's a Q path. Oh shit, I'm easier to, li to listen to me. How many sides? How many Abby? sides of Q path? <laughs> Forest. She kind of disappoint me. No, 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 it's just... Okay, so it's like... Four Boris, sides, are right? you... And then... Um... Boris! <laughs> Um, no, six, six. Six! six. six. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, hey! I was trying to multitask! Six! <laughs> I had to multitask! Yo. I was trying to multitask! Oh, oh, oh my. my. Oh, I heard. Oh, I heard. Oh my gosh. I was this trying is to not die, okay? Good. Yeah, as I was saying before, Aaron, we're just retards. <laughs> <laughs> we're just retarded in different ways. Oh, there he is. Hello. Hi. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> Now's the time. Thank you. <laughs> Whoa, what the? Oh my goodness. Oh my god, god this is so cool. What the heck? What? Russ, ride your sparrow and then follow us into the gates of Avalon. Mario Gates Ribbon Road from Mario Kart. Three, two, one. I just fly off. Guys, I don't think these lanes were uh, <laughs> the same lane. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, oh, they're poopy dupes. Guys, we can't go on this one. <laughs> oh my lord. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Oh, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. Oh. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Why do I hear boss music? The final encounter of the dungeon can be summed up in two words. Fire bed! Ah, oh, fire! <laughs> we have CC'd. Oh my god, it's Fire! This fire! Fire! Oh, fire! 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 Oh, fire! 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 Bad. Fire! Fire! Bad. Oh, fire! 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 Bad. Oh, this is tough. Fire! Fire! Bad. Fire! Bad. Fire! Bad. Fire! Bad. Fire! Fire! Bad. Fire! Bad. Fuck! Fire! Fire! And then the Fire Nation attacked. <laughs> literally, literally. There's a lot of guns in a lot of places in the final boss room. Deal with the ads and keep moving is the winning strat. I missed. This goes double in the damage phase room. Sturm here is actually essential for this boss damage phase. Right now there's a bug that if you shoot the boss with Sturm, then get teleported back by him, his health just vanishes, leaving him basically one shot. So yeah, this is super simple, super effective, and to be honest, calling it a bug might be inaccurate as Sturm does so much damage to other bosses anyways. Wouldn't be surprising if he did this much damage to this guy. In math terms, it's obvious that as you're getting teleported, your Sturm overcharges, instead of coming with you, are being transported directly into the boss's skull because they're made of silver bullets. In Destiny lore, whenever Shax got teleported, his silver teeth would always get transported elsewhere, and he got so fed up with it that he decided to leave his teeth behind and just never take his helmet off. Unfortunately, I know that this is indeed a bug, because the damage you do gets attributed to other people in your fire team.